I learned long ago that when Koa Smith asks you to drop what you're doing to chase a swell, <laughs> the only logical response is to pack oh your things. God. And this time, I found myself amongst the incredible coastlines of South Africa. However, this story isn't just about the ways we chased or the ones we caught. It's about the people we met along the way. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Look at the colors. And the first person we met was wild food forager Roshana Gray. Roshana and her community have retaught themselves how to harvest harmoniously and sustainably from the wild places they call home. During the summers, she forges the coastline. In autumn, turns to the mushroom-filled forests. In winter, forges the veld. And in springtime, it's all about the flowers. However, there are a few rare and precious pockets of time when a little bit of everything is available. And as fate would have it, my crew and I have stumbled into one. The first thing Roshana taught us about was seaweed, a highly unutilized source of food. It's up to 35% protein, which is more than any land plant has to offer. Wow. Then pointed Koa and I towards a few clumps of invasive mussels that, if picked, would improve the local ecosystem. Slipping into the sea, we found ourselves amongst the towering beauty of an underwater forest. We then began to harvest a very precise amount of atticacles and kelp, a ridiculously nutritious, tasty, and bountiful source of food that I had no clue was on the menu, which left me pondering on all the other things this planet may provide that we simply overlook. of time and wisdom it took to put such a beautiful meal together that we have not seen. Thank you. The only person who's ever said that yeah. in the history of yeah. any meal. The next day, Roshana and I went to try our luck with mushroom hunting. You gotta look really hot. Sometimes the mushroom calls you. Okay, I'll listen. And you gotta have patience. And started to explain to me the joy she finds in foraging her own food. Foraging is not just about getting food to eat, obviously it is, but it's also about getting to learn more about your natural environment and to look at the world and to walk through your world in a different way. It almost like it creates a sense of home. Even though you are by yourself out in nature or out in the wild, you're not alone. We continue to speak about this feeling of home and the importance of taking the time to connect with these wild places. How they have this enchanting way of filling you with life and leaving you with the longing to care for them like they care for us. So before my time with Roshana came to a close, I asked her one last question. Besides the deliciously wild foods that overflow your plates, what is this place given to you? It's given me everything. It's, it's um, I don't know, you just feel so small in the grander scheme of things and all of a sudden you realize that all these domestic worries and things that we have every day that go r running through our minds, it's not that important. So it's a, nice, it's a nice perspective to have whether you're out in the sea or in the rocky shoreline or in the mountains and it's, yeah, it's nice. That's a great piece of advice. The next time that I'm stressing about things that are not that important, get outside. I'm gonna get outside. I'm gonna take a look around. I'm gonna think about Mama Roshana and our wild adventures in the Western Cape. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.